Things are getting interesting. It's coming down to the wire. The Bulls versus the Bears. Is the market going to continue to roll over or are the Bulls going to step in for an end of year rally? We're going to talk about that on today's episode of the I'm Running Out of Breath Stock Market Brief Show. Let's get into it. Welcome back, everybody. So the IMF, they warned. On inflation, says the Fed and others should be prepared to tighten policy. Ah, Consumer Prices Index, we got that report today. It rises more than expected, but relatively, you know, nothing too shocking until you dig deep into the numbers, right? Consumer Price Index year over year came in at an actual 5.4% against its forecast of 5.3%. The month over month came in at 0.4% against its forecast of 0.3%. If you take a look at this chart right here by Advisor Perspectives, couple things to note. The headline came at a 5.4. That is this red line right here. That includes energy and food. And you can see it's pulling up to right around the 2008 financial crisis highs there. But the latest core inflation, as you can see, yes, it's beating the 2% PCE target. Um, that's at 4.3 and that's without 4.03, sorry, without the food and energy costs. And then one last thing on the headline inflation, that is coming in at a 13-year high. So that's a big, big move. Now, like I said, a lot of this is being driven by energy, cost of shelter, food, etc. The cost of shelter was up 3.2% versus 2.8% in August. Food was up 4.6% versus 3.7%, and that's the highest since December of 2011. You have new vehicles are up 8.7% versus 7.6%. So there's a lot of different things contributing to this headline report. Now, what's interesting here that I want to point out is typically in market cycles, which we'll get into here very shortly, Market cycles is when you start to see energy as one of the top performing sectors. What do I mean? Take a look at this where it shows the cycle through both economic and stock market cycles. And what you can see here, the orange is the stock market. And when it hits this market top, the top performing sectors are typically materials, energy, typically just energy, right? That's that's right there at the peak. And then when it starts to roll over, you start to see consumer staples, healthcare, and utilities pick up. Okay, so I don't know how high energy can go. I mean, a lot of people are calling for energy and oil being $100 a barrel. Go, go, no, just kidding. All right, and we don't know how, oh my gosh, she's going crazy. We don't know how, oh my gosh, dude. Oh my goodness. We don't know how high energy can go, so we don't know how high a top can potentially be. But if you've looked throughout history, a lot of market tops have preceded big spikes in the energy sector, including oil. Now, what else is on the front? Well, Biden enlists Target, Walmart to fix the bottlenecks, threatening holiday sales. This is all the boats that you see outside of the port of Long Beach and various other ports where they're just stacking up. This was important news that came out today because this could potentially offer relief to various retailers coming into the holiday season, which could be a positive thing. Um, all hands on deck. This was reported by Rudders. Besides the stepped-up port activity, the three large carriers of goods, Walmart, FedEx, UPS, they plan to step up their round-the-clock operations to speed the shipments of these goods across the country. Samsung, Home Depot, and Target are also increasing their um, working off-peak hours. So, you know, that's positive news because if you do see the XRT chart, this is just a retailer spider ETF. This has been looking very weak. It's been consolidating, but we had this big break here with increasing volume. Then it's been kind of drying up the volume and it's been kind of going sideways right on the 200-day moving average. It was up today and it's up around this kind of positive news. So, you know, perhaps this might offer some relief. I'm not too sure. It's still looks like a massive topping type pattern, but we're, it's a little too early to tell right now. Um, you got to think like, like Apple just had some bad news come out, right? Apple was talking about their supply constraints. So they're going to limit the production of iPhones going into the holiday season. You have to think of other retailers like Costco, Walmart. Um, you know, if, if they don't have the inventory or if prices keep increasing, perhaps this is going to really put a damper into their holiday sales. And if that's really the case, well, the earnings season that comes after that, it could be could be not that great. And this could put pressure, obviously, on various retail stocks. So we need to be very mindful of that data. Also, we had the FOMC minutes today. They said that it could begin a gradual taping process by mid-November. Look at, they can say all they want, but we don't 
we can't we, we don't know anything until action actually takes place so how did the market you know handle this taper talk that it can come sooner than expected uh, it almost seemed just like they ignored it and well let's take a look bonds rallied higher the 10-year yield eased off a little bit that's good for big tech right we've been talking about that u.s dollar um Geez, that's a big move to the downside, right? Almost down a half a percent. You can see a big red candle in this area of resistance. When this happens, that's really typically good for equity markets. We saw, you know, some downside movement today in the S&P 500, but it created a hammer candle bouncing back. We'll get into those here soon. But what did this very, uh, what did this benefit the most? Take a look at gold. Holy moly, up 2% on the day. That is a big move in the price of gold. Even take a look at silver, up 2.9% up in the day, still below some key moving averages. We're talking about this falling wedge. Finally broke out, saw some strength back above the 50 on the RSI. PPO is crossing up, right? But it's still below zero at this particular time. And miners have been doing very, very well. And that could be because of this. I mean, the sentiment was extremely bearish. If you take a look at the BPGDM, the gold miners bullish percent index, something that I've been tracking, the RSI got down to this oversold territory. It passed through 25, tapped into 20. That is that is some bearish sentiment up in this area right here. So typically what we can see when it comes down to these levels, we start to see it turn up and we're starting to see some strong performance. This is one of the reasons why I posted this on Twitter, that the Dixie was breaking out. And this SIJ, this is the silver miners, junior silver miners trade has a hundred mile an hour wind blowing straight in my face. But I said, let's go anyway. Had a little pop, moved my stop loss up took some profits, and then all of a sudden, in a few days' time, bam, 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 big, big, strong move for the junior silvers, including a 4% move just today. But what else has been really benefiting from that dollar drop? Look at copper. Copper was up 4.4%, breaking out of this falling wedge. Huge move in volume there, too, as well. Oil continues to maintain its just, uh, just above $80, so it's just really consolidating right here. PPO, you know, the histogram's kind of dying off. It's kind of curling over, but it's still above zero. RSI is getting a little crispy too. Um, crispy, frothy, burnt, whatever you want to call it. So it might want to take a little bit of a breather, consolidate or pull back a little bit. Something to watch out for. Meanwhile, Bitcoin still holding very strong there, right at around 57,500 after this breakout. Ethereum also consolidating sideways. Still haven't broken out of this. I guess you can call it a cup with handle or just whatever you want to call it. It just hasn't broke out quite of this little miniature flag right here. We saw some strength. It's been consolidating, but it looks like if we get this continued strength, if it gets above this 3,600 and closes there for the day, there's no reason why we can't go retest 4,000 in the price of Ethereum. Overall, let's take a look at the dashboard. You know, it was a busy day today, but relatively flat across the indices. Dow, flat. S&P 500 up 0.3. We'll get into these charts here soon. Soon, if you take a look at the 11 sectors, oh, utilities. That was one of the stronger performing sectors up 1.17%. Interesting because this is more of a defensive sector. So that's a, not necessarily a red flag, but kind of a red flag. Just seeing that technology was in the top three and that really was driven by what? That was driven by them 10-year yields. We still have a calendar full of information ahead of us this week. So we need to be prepared and we still need to be cautious. What do we have coming up? Well, we have PPI, we have, uh, what else? Retail sales and consumer sentiment to name a few. Those are some big um, reports to continue to watch. Now I want to take a quick short break and just thank everybody that's been signing up for my Discord group or my Patreon, I should say. I have a link in the description below. We have a uh, $9 a month. That's all I charge. It's less than getting a double smoked bacon sandwich and a um, caramel salted foam cold brew at Starbucks, which costs $10. I get it frequently. But for $9 a month, you can get some daily trade ideas. I show swing setups. It includes the Discord benefits. You can come into the Discord. It helps support this channel just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Well, we've had some really quality trades come up, including LAC tagging at the bottom of this little channel. And then POW, this thing is ran up about 28%. We've had ticker symbol ANY that was forming this tight little wedge pattern right here. That thing jumped up about 29%. And then we had HUT recently, HUT, forming a nice little wedge pattern. Bam, that was up 28, 6%. Um, so we have some really good quality setups in there, but not to say that that's all we get. It's, you know, that we have losers too. Here's a loser in TNX. I was looking for a gap fill play, came down into this area of support, thought we can potentially bounce. Well, we bounced a little bit, but then it ended up rolling over. Just so you know, you know, it's not always winners. It's not always rainbows and butterflies, but we talk a lot about managing risk, setting up 
quality risk to reward trades so that you can benefit when that patience really pays off. Let's now hop into the S&P 500. We broke down from this rising wedge. We came back to back test it. We fell back down. We came back up and then we went back down. Talk about just a lot of chop taking place. Formed a nice hammer candle on the day right there at that 100 day moving average. Let's zoom in on the SPY. Potential still for the inverse head and shoulders. Look at, we're still putting in lower highs and we have a lower low here, okay? So we're, we gotta get back above the 50 day moving average, back above 442.50, back above 445 would be even better, okay? So we're not out of the woods yet, but we're seeing some positive stuff develop and take place. And that's important to watch. Um, right here on the 15 minute time frame, we talked about a falling wedge in yesterday's uh, yesterday's post. If you didn't see that, you can always go back to my website and see that post. But now we're forming a potential for an inverse head and shoulders. This can take us up to a one four, or sorry, to 441 on a full measured move. Perhaps, maybe if we break out, we get up there or even potentially fill this gap. We got to get back above the five day moving average. It is starting to incline. So that's positive. But if you look at this screen, it's really just a spaghetti noodle at this particular point in time. Let's take a look at the VIX. The VIX is forming a very tight wedge here right? So there's a possibility to break out. We still haven't filled that gap above us. So that can still be the threat there to the S&P 500 in the short term. Um, so that's something to watch, but we still also have two gaps beneath us as well that have been left open. We talked about this indicator right here. This is the percent of stocks above the 50 day moving average. We talked about it getting overextended to the downside here. All right. And when it gets overextended to the downside, you can see relief bounces like here in September of last year. Bam. We saw a move to the upside right here in November. Bam. Right to the upside. This was going into the election. And then we saw it right here and we're starting to see a little bit of a move to the upside. Okay. It doesn't mean that it's going to continue all the way up to 4,500, but it doesn't not mean that it can't go up there. It's just something that we called out. We're seeing some strength come in. And now we want to see if we can continue to get more stocks to press up, to see more breadth in the market come in and more stocks that participate in the S&P 500 to get above that key moving average. Okay. So that's important to watch. If you take a look at the NIAD, this is the NYSE advanced decline line. This is important to note. It's still consolidating. We recaptured the 50 day moving average. We recaptured the 50 level on the RSI. And if you pay very close attention, it's been putting in a little bit of a positive divergence. You can see the line is putting in a, uh, a low to higher lows. And this, uh, the price action on the S&P 500 has actually been going down here. So this could be an early indicator saying that some breath might be coming into the market, which would be a positive thing. Another interesting note is the NIA. This is NYSE Advanced Decline Volume Index. And I pointed this out on Twitter and I'm not gonna put too much weight on it, but it is pretty interesting. But every time that this, the NIA cumulative line had a 50 moving average cross down through the 200 day, that's known as a death cross. Look where that coincided with the S&P 500. It almost tagged the market bottoms perfectly. There was still more downside right here going into the uh, late 2019, but it tagged it fairly well and then started moving up. The last death cross was right here in the March pandemic. Bam, that tagged it right around this range. Pretty darn good. Now we've been pulling back. We have that death cross taking place. Hey, perhaps this is just marking somewhat near the bottom of per perhaps a stronger move in the S&P 500. Don't put too much weight on it, but I just found that interesting and wanted to share it because data is data. BPSPX chart turned down a little bit today. Positive divergence playing out, but you know, it's still it still hasn't fully played out to the point where this thing gets back above 4,400 on the SPX, but it is looking a little bit stronger. Not much to report there. Meanwhile, the trend, this was on yesterday's post, came up into this green line. That's when it gets a little bit bullish. We saw that relief move today as it came down back through the green line. So when it gets up to the green line, that's typically, you know, you see the market act a little bit more bullish, but when it comes down to the red line, that's when you typically see it get a little bit more bearish. So I'm going to continue to watch and see how that develops. Let's hop, let's, let's hop into the Dow Jones, still range bound, put in a nice hammer candle today, right around the 20 day moving average. Let's hop into the 15 minute time frame. You have a low, a higher low, a higher low, a higher higher low, and it's all pressing into this pretty important 4, 345 level on the Dow Jones Industrial ETF. We are still below the spaghetti noodle right here, the five-day moving average. It's still neutral. We need to reclaim that, and we need to start getting this in an uptrend to feel more confident. Take a look at the transports. The transports are above the five-day moving average. It has been holding as support, so that's positive if you look at Dow Theory. Still 
You can see 14,750 has been acting as a level of resistance, so that's something to pay attention to. Meanwhile, if you take a look at the PMO, this is the price uh, momentum oscillator. It's been kind of putting in lower highs. Meanwhile, this has been tagging pretty much right around the same high, so momentum slowing on this. We'll see if that can break out to the upside. And if you really take a look at transports on the weekly time frame, you can see here RSI is back above 50. We're back above the five weekly moving average, and we're seeing some strength on this breakout. That could be a very positive sign also to note the whole um, debacle that's going on in the ports, all the shipping that's been going on and just kind of backlogged, they're going to have to hire more truckers, et cetera, which could be potentially good with all that focus on various transportation stocks. Just a thought. Let's look at the NASDAQ 100. Still range bound in this up channel, right? Higher lows, higher highs. However, in the short term here in September, we're putting in lower lows and lower highs. I'm looking for a recapture of the 20 period moving average, then a recapture of the 50 day. We're not there yet and we're still below this downward sloping trend line. So yes, we saw some you know, decent day today, but we're not out of the woods. The PPO oscillator right here looks like it wants to start crossing back up. Um, to have a bullish crossover, but it is still below zero. So that is to note. If you take a look at the 15 minute time frame, this little wedge, we did break out, we back tested, we started moving higher. What do we need to do? We need to reclaim the five day moving average, which is currently at 360. And we need to start breaking out through 363 and even 366, these previous swing highs. So we have a high, a lower high, lower high, a low, a lower low, a lower low. So we're currently trending down in this short term since October 7th. So it's something to just continue to monitor and pay attention to. Meanwhile, if you look at NASDAQ, new high, new low, we talked about this positive divergence. We saw the bounce, and now it's actually putting in another positive divergence on the very, very short term. You have the price action going lower, and then you have the new high, new low index, histogram right here, moving up. So that's a positive thing. Take a look at the BPNDX. Not much to report here. We talked about this being a pretty low level and it bounces from those areas. So yeah, we're bouncing from that area. We'll continue to monitor. It could be a dead cat bounce, but right now it's showing some strength. So that's a positive sign. If you look at the percent of stocks above the 50 day moving average, very similar to the S&P 500, it reaches these low levels. Boom, boom, boom. We bounce, we bounce, we bounce. How high can we bounce? Well, we don't know yet, but we use that as data when it's around. So what, hold the, what held the NASDAQ 100 up today? If you take a look at the heat map, well, the FANG stocks, obviously, right? The big the big dogs, Microsoft up, Google up, Amazon up, NVIDIA up. The only one that wasn't really up because of bad news was Apple. If you take a look into the charts, Facebook tagged the 200-day moving average, and we saw a little bit of a bounce today, but a little bit of a sell-off. This could be a very good area to pick up shares if you're very long-term. Look, it could always turn back down and head lower, but it's ran into a 200-day inclining moving average. The RSI put in a positive divergence. Histograms turning up on the PPO. It's a very, very tight fall. I can see I can see this bounce up from here. That's a definite possibility. So we'll continue to watch that and see how that goes and how it helps the S&P 500 and even the NASDAQ 100 out. If you take a look at Apple, it was down on the day, but it did put in a hammer candle, tagged the lower Bollinger Band, but we're still below those key moving averages, 120 and 50. Take a look at Microsoft. Microsoft showed a little bit of strength today, up 1.17. This is a behemoth, one to very watch very closely. We should start as we reclaim the 50-day, get back above this previous swing high, potentially just get above 300. It looks like it could be potentially a little inverse head and shoulders, right? A little left shoulder head, right shoulder forming, necklines at 300. That shoots us off to all-time highs. Be careful. The upper Bollinger Band is right where the previous uh, supply was at, which was right around 305. So we'll continue to monitor that and see what takes place with Microsoft. Google, also a very important one, up on the day, but really it was just an inside trading day. So we had a strong move to the downside. Now we're just channeling within the previous trading day. This can break down or it can break up. We're still above the increasing 100-day moving average, but we are still below the 20 and the 50-day moving average. Tesla broke above 800 the other day, and today it started pressing higher, but it did so on pretty lackluster volume overall. I would have liked to see more volume on this breakout because when you get through 800, there's nothing really holding it to go into 850, to be quite honest. That's pretty much the next area of resistance. But it's been consolidating. Maybe perhaps maybe perhaps it's going to take a little bit longer for some volume to step in. Or maybe perhaps this is just a little tight rising wedge as the RSI is getting overextended. And then we might need to see another pullback, maybe a little flush, then potentially try to head higher. So that's one to watch. Bullish overall on that specific chart. And if you take a look at NVIDIA, this is also a pretty important one to watch. Inside trading day, 
right beneath this area of resistance. I didn't draw it out below the 50 day, below the 20 day price percent oscillator is trying to turn up here and be a little bit more bullish too as well. This is a big one to watch. It's heavily traded on the retail side. So continue to watch this. I'm looking for trying to get above and hold those key moving averages, which is the 50 and the 200 day. AMD did very well today, by the way. Um, AMD was up uh, quite a, quite a bit, but it'd be nice to send NVIDIA kind of play side by side with that. Russell 2000, let's hop into that. Still range bound, pretty strong day overall. Nice candle, right? It was pretty red, but the 200 day continued to hold and we're really pinned between the 100 and the 200 day moving averages. We have the 20, we have the 50 day. We're all, just, it's just like so tightly wound up and coiled right now. The next move that it makes out of this little channel is going to be very aggressive. It's too early to tell which way that's going to go. But I tell you what, I probably, if we break out from 225 up, I think we're going to retag this upper channel. If we break down, I think we can test the lower channel, right? It's, it's a very strong possibility as this is just, just coiling, right? Contra uh, expansion leads to contraction. Contraction leads to expansion. Let's take a look at the 15 minute time frame. Broke out of the rising falling wedge, sorry. Try to reclaim there the five day moving average. It is sloping up, but rather sideways overall. We need to get back above that, get back above 223.50, and we'll feel a little bit more confident there. Price percent, uh, the price momentum oscillator, sorry, is curling up through zero. So overall, IWM looks pretty strong here. It's just consolidating. That's the only thing. So uh, if we take a look at the heat map, look, I was saying that financials made up for about 20%. I re looked at the fact sheet. Um, on the website that shows this. And now I'm looking at healthcare makes up the biggest percentage of 20%. Financial is still one of the top and that's at 14%. So what drove um, uh, IWM today? Well, healthcare, a lot of green across the board. Financials were down. We have a lot of banks reporting. So that's gonna be an interesting week. Also information technology did very well here in the Russell 2000. If you wanna look at the top sectors in the IWM, now we have healthcare leading the way at 21 point one two percent as the top weighted sector and then financials a little bit lower in industrials and information technology right there Whew, that was a lot we talked about a lot so it's time to wrap it up put it into a conclusion tie a little bow on it see how we feel let's look at seasonality all right october typically from a post-election perspective you actually get a little bit of a sell-off in october perhaps that came already we don't know but then coming into november you typically see a rally Right? Even here on the average year, you get this little sell-off towards the end of October, and then bam, we see a move up higher. We don't know if this sell-off already came. We're in the middle of November. This shows more than halfway through November, we get some selling, but then when November comes along, we get that move up. So, you know, are we going to see that end of year rally today? You know, I, I, I'm not 100% positive, but if we just focus on seasonality, it suggests that, and we do have some narratives that can potentially um, help with the price action, market might be pricing in ahead of time. We don't really know, okay? All we can use um, to our advantage, other than, because we don't have inside information, we don't know, we can look at price and volume, and price and volume are the two top indicators to be paying attention to. If we look at the NASDAQ composite overall, you know, it found a lot of support at 14,200, and that's important. Right now, it's been putting in lower highs, lower lows, but it's in consolidation mode. So this could be flagging potentially where we start to head higher, get back above that 14,750. That will very well help out the remaining indices too as well. And the reason why I'm showing the comp Q is because it's a gigantic composite. And if you also take a look at semiconductors, semiconductors are going to have to help out too. This is the SMH. Semiconductors, if they start lagging, if they start falling, it's going to put a lot of pressure on the overall markets. They make up a big portion of the NASDAQ composite. We had an inside trading day today, but we're still above the 200 day moving average. So how am I approaching this? I'm being careful and I'm continuing to be careful. I'm still on the long side. I'm looking for a breakout of the IWM so I can play various small caps. It's a stock pickers environment, as you can see from that little um, promo cut that I did of the uh, Discord group. We're picking out various stocks and we've seen some strong moves in some of them that aren't, it's not natural to see just a 30% move, you know, in some of these stocks, but that's what we're seeing. And you, you got to just be very, very tactical when you approach these. You don't want to put in, you know, a huge you know amount in any one trade. You want to play it tactfully. You want to manage your risk because that's the only thing that you have complete control over is your risk. So be careful out there. Hope today's episode helped. See you all later.